I heard you wanted to make a Patrick cardigan. Well, guess what? You've come to the right place. In this class, I'll be teaching you everything you need to know in order to make the cardigan of your dreams. Assistant? Start the lesson. Before you can even think about getting started, you should go out and get all the materials you need in order to crochet. For this Patrick Cardigan tutorial, you will need the following. A pair of scissors, a crochet hook, measuring tape, a darning needle, a sewing needle and thread, stitch markers, buttons, and yarn. You can get crochet materials at any craft store where you live, but I personally purchased a crochet kit on Amazon. I believe it's perfect for any beginner starting to crochet, and it came with all the crochet materials I needed so I didn't have to go out and buy everything individually. A link to it will be in the description box below. In order to design the cardigan of your dreams, you first want to make sure you have all of your measurements written down so that you can make the cardigan the perfect size. To do this, I recommend two methods. The first method is to measure a cardigan or a sweater that you own. Take the measurements of that sweater on your body and again on a flat surface to make sure the measurements are accurate. To get the measurements for the front panels of the Patrick cardigan, take the measurements of the front panels of a cardigan you already own. Getting the length starting from the top seam to the start of the bottom ribbing. You want all your measurements to start at the seams so the measurements can be accurate. After you take those measurements, you can adjust them to different widths or lengths depending on how big or small you want the cardigan you're making to be. For an example, if you want the cardigan that you're making to be longer than the sweater that you already own, you can add length to it easily by adding more inches to the length measurements that you took. Another method to take measurements is by measuring your body. I personally recommend doing both methods, but if you don't have a cardigan or a sweater to measure as a template, just measuring your body will do the trick. The measurements you'll need are as followed. Shoulder width, torso length, arm length, arm circumference, wrist circumference, and how long you want the cardigan to be. With these measurements, you can figure out how big the cardigan is going to be. Right here, I have a diagram of three different cardigan sizes with all the measurements you'll need for different parts of the cardigan. The section labeled Old Cardi is for the Fall Patrick cardigan that I did in that last video. The This Cardi label is for the cardigan in this video. And the Tanjiro label is for a third cardigan I'm making that goes down to my knees. The last measurements you'll need to figure out is the size of the squares. I personally used 5.5 inches by 5.5 inches and 5 by 5 inch squares, but you can use any size square, just make sure to add those measurements into your own. For an example, if you decide on 5 by 5 inch squares and you want to make a full size cardigan, in one column for the front and back panels, you'll need to make 4 squares in that column. If you decide on 5.5 by 5.5 inch squares for a cropped cardigan, in one column for the front and back panels, you need to make 2 squares in that column. I really hope that makes sense. So right here, I have the measurements for the squares and how many squares are needed for each section of each cardigan. So you can go ahead and pause and write down the measurements or use this as a template to figure out your own. Now this is the fun part. You have complete creative control over how you want your cardigan to look. Do you want it to be simple squares with different colors? Or do you want to add a little cute design here and there into each square? The choice is yours. To design the cardigan, you have to figure out how long or short you want it to be, choose a color scheme, choose what kind of yarn you want to use, a pattern, and crochet stitches. It seems like a lot, but I'll take you through it all step by step. The first step is to choose how long you want your cardigan to be. Do you want it to be a cute cropped cardigan that shows off your outfit, a full size cardigan that stays at the waistband, or a long cardigan that's similar to Tanjiro's kimono from Demon Slayer? The choice is yours. 
After deciding on the length, it's time for the color scheme. This part is a bit intimidating if you love so many colors like I do, and it would probably take as long as putting the actual cardigan together, but definitely take your time and you'll be able to choose the perfect colors for yourself. If you need color inspiration, I recommend going on Pinterest and typing in color palettes, looking at art you like on Instagram or Pinterest, or going to a color palette generator. I will have all of that linked in the description box below. I personally used the color palette generator and played around with it until I decided on a color scheme that intrigued my senses. You can even take a look at clothing online and take inspiration from their colors. Choosing a color scheme flows into the next step, which is choosing your yarn. This part for me took a lot of research and going to different stores and reading a bunch of different yarn brand descriptions. I personally chose to use 100% acrylic yarn due to me not wanting to use any products that are from animals unless they are ethical and cruelty free. And I can't really tell if it is just by reading the back of the yarn ball. Whatever your choice is, whether it be acrylic, cotton, wool, etc., make sure you read into the pros and cons of the type of yarn. Acrylic is cheap and the most attainable, coming in an array of different colors. However, it tends to be a bit rough, flammable, and is made out of plastic. Wool is highly sustainable, biodegradable, and natural made from the undercoat of sheep. It's perfect to keep you warm and insulated. However, it's more expensive and depending on the brand, it's obtained in unethical ways. There are many, many types of yarns that I didn't go through, so definitely do your research and figure out which material is best for you. Another thing to keep in mind while choosing your yarn is the yarn weight. The yarn weight lets you know if the cardigan will turn out super chunky or really thin. Right here, I have three different types of yarn skeins, each of which are a different weight. The green yarn is a DK weight 3 yarn, the gray is a worsted weight 4 yarn, and the red is a super chunky weight 6 yarn. I made swatches of each to show you the differences and help you figure out which yarn weight you'd like to use. The DK weight 3 yarn is very thin and loose to work with. To me, it feels like it would be best to use for clothing that would be worn in warm weather. The worsted weight 4 yarn is the yarn that I'll be using for this tutorial. It's great for beginners to use and it's a great medium if you want a yarn that isn't too bulky or too thin. The super chunky weight 6 yarn is great for chunky sweaters and blankets and rugs, so I would also recommend using this yarn for a nice warm cardigan. Once you choose which one fits your liking the most, you can shop within that yarn weight and find the yarn in the colors of your choice. For the cardigan that I'll be working on in this video, I chose the colors black, red, light gray, and dark gray from the brand Impeccable, all of which are worsted, weight 4 yarn, 100% acrylic. I paid $3.49 for each skein. For each color, I needed two skeins except for the color I used for the ribbing, button band, and collar, for which I needed three to four skeins. The next step is to choose your pattern and crochet stitches. And what I mean by this is how you want the squares to look. For the pattern, do you want the squares to be striped? Do you want them to have pumpkins or flowers in the middle? Do you want them to be granny squares? The best way to see how the cardigan will look is to draw it out. Now, you don't have to be a Bob Ross to draw out your cardigan or anything. I know for sure I'm not, but drawing it out on paper or a tablet can really give you that visual aspect you need to truly decide on how you want the cardigan to look. This is also the best way to see how the colors go together as well. So grab your color pencils, markers, or tablet and get to drawing. For the cardigan in this tutorial, I created this diagram with the colors that I decided on. It's going to be a simple and plain full-size cardigan, but I decided to alter the wristband and the arm size from the last patchwork cardigan that I did. The diagram is super helpful for me, so I know how many squares I need to make for the length that I want. For my cardigan, each square is 5x5 five five inches. Here is another diagram of a third cardigan I'm currently working on, and due to me wanting it to go down to my knees, all I did was take the last diagram I made and add a couple more squares to the columns of the front and back panels. To do that, all I did was take my measurements from my shoulders to my knees and then add 5 inches per each square until the measurement was close to the measurements that I took from my body. Hopefully that made sense. For the arms, I took out a row of squares so that it wouldn't be as long as they were, which is why there's a blue scribble on both of the arms. However, looking at the final product, I realized I didn't take into account that the last cardigan was 5x5 five five inches and this one was 5 inches. So the arms were a tad bit short on me in the end, but I'm okay with that. I'm stating this so that if you want to alter the diagram or measurements in this video in any way, just please keep in mind your personal measurements and also the fact that yarn stretches. So 
measurements might not always be 100% accurate. The other thing with the diagram is that if you're putting it together the exact way you drew the diagram, keep in mind that the squares are inside out and when you pull the cardigan right side out, it will be flipped. So I recommend mirroring the diagram so that the original way you designed it can be the way that it actually comes out. After you choose the pattern of the squares, the next step is to choose how you want the squares to look in terms of stitch. There are many, many different types of stitches in crochet, but in this video, I'm only going to focus on two. Well, three. Single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. Right here, I have two squares, one that was single crocheted and one that was half double crocheted. And I also have an image of one that was double crocheted because I didn't make a double crochet square. The single crochet square uses more yarn than the half double crochet does. However, I enjoy the look of a single crochet a lot more than the half double crochet and the double crochet due to it being less holy, if that makes sense. It's tightly stitched together and it's pretty to me. This is the half double crochet square and it's still pretty, but I don't think it matches to her sister in my personal opinion. But this opinion also depends on the project I'm working on. The other thing to keep in mind is that the half double crochet square and the double crochet square is a lot more flowy than the single crochet square as it's not as tightly stitched together. This highly depends on the type of yarn you use, the size crochet hook, and your crochet tension. For this cardigan tutorial, I'll be using the single crochet stitch. For beginners watching this video, I have a quick tutorial on how to do a single crochet and the half double crochet and double crochet just in case you haven't mastered it yet. The tutorial will be shown once we get started with the squares. We are finally at the stage where we can start bringing the cardigan to life. How exciting! <laughs> right here are the materials that we need to get started. A pair of scissors, a 5mm crochet hook, measuring tape, and the color yarn you want to start with. Now I'm going to be showing two ways to make the squares. The first way is the separate method and the second way is the color change method. To make the individual squares one at a time, the first thing that you want to do is create a slip knot. In order to create a slip knot the way that I personally do it, you first want to wrap the yarn around your index finger twice, making sure you leave a bit of a tail. Then take the first loop and pull it over the second loop slightly, and after that take the first loop which was originally the second loop and pull it over the second loop that was originally the first loop. Then take the loop off your finger and you'll see at the bottom of the loop a small knot was formed. Once you see that, you can insert your crochet hook into the loop and pull both ends of the yarn to tighten it onto the crochet hook. A lot of people hold their yarn in different ways, but for me personally, I figured out this is the way that is best for my wrist. I first wrap the yarn over my pinky, and then under my ring finger, and then over my middle finger, and then under my index finger, but then wrap it back around my index finger. Once I do that, I take my thumb and my pinky and grasp the slip knot that we created to make the whole loop thing I did around my hand stay secure. I'm going to show you once more just to make sure. So again, I wrap the yarn over my pinky, under my ring finger, over my middle finger, and under my index finger, and then back around my index finger. And then I use my thumb and my pinky to hold onto the slip knot to keep the yarn secure. After I do that, I can now create my chain. So for this tutorial, I've stated before, I changed up a bit of the measurements on my card cardigan. If you're wanting to do the original measurements for the fall cardigan in my previous video, I will have the measurements on the side of the screen to make it easy to follow along. To start the square, I chained 20. To chain, all you have to do is take the hook, put it under the yarn, which is called yarning over, like yarn over the hook, and then pull the hook with the yarn through the slip knot. This creates a chain. You're going to do this 19 more times. So again, yarn over and then pull through the loop. Once you've created your chain, it's time to make your first row. So this is where you can choose to do either single crochet, half double crochet, or double crochet. I personally chose to do single crochet, so that's what I'll be showing in this tutorial. To start the first row, you're going to skip the loop that the loop on your hook is currently inside. So you're going inside the second loop, if that makes sense. You're going to push your hook inside the two Vs of the chain you just crocheted so that the hook shows up on the back of the project. Then you're going to yarn over, pull the yarn and hook through the same hole. There should be two loops on the crochet hook. Next, you're going to yarn over once more 
and pull through both loops on the crochet hook. And that's the single crochet. Again, you're gonna push the hook through the two Vs, yarn over, pull through the hole, yarn over again, and pull through both loops. You're gonna keep doing this until the end of the row. So here, I will show you a quick tutorial on how to do the half double crochet and the double crochet just in case you wanted to use one of those stitches instead. For the half double crochet, all you have to do is yarn over, insert your hook into the loop, yarn over again, and pull the hook through the loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Once you see you have three loops, you're going to yarn over it once more and pull your hook through all three loops. Once more, you're going to yarn over, then once your hook is inside, you're going to go over again and pull the hook through the loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over for the last time and pull your hook through all three loops. For the double crochet, you're going to do almost the exact same thing as the half double crochet. You're going to yarn over and then insert your hook into the loop. Then you're going to yarn over again and pull through, making sure you have three loops on your hook. Once you do, yarn over again and pull through two of the loops. You should have two loops on your hook. Once you see that you do, yarn over once more and pull through the last two loops. Again, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the loop, yarn over again, and pull through the loop, making sure that you have three loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops, which will make two loops remaining on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over for the last time and pull through both loops. And that's your tutorial on the half double and double crochet stitches. So right now we're at the last chain of this row. You can tell because the knot from the slip knot is right here, showing that there's no more chains to go into besides this last one. So all you have to do is single crochet one more time into the last chain and then that row is complete. After creating a row, more defined Vs on the top of the row should pop up. What you're going to do now is chain one, and then turn your work. You can make sure you're working on the top of the project by seeing where the slip knot is. Skip the first loop, and then single crochet all the way down until the end of the row. You're going to keep doing this for a total of 20 rows or until it is 5 inches by 5 inches. If you have trouble remembering which loop to go into at the end of the rows, you can easily use a stitch marker and place it on the last loops of both sides to make sure the project stays straight instead of hourglassing. So right now, we're at the end of the last row for the square. This is how the individual squares will end. You're going to single crochet into the last loop, chain one, and then cut the yarn. After cutting the yarn, pull the yarn until it comes through the chain and then pull it tightly so the square closes properly and it's secure. You've just made your first square. How cool is that? This is the method for the individual squares. If you follow this method, then all you have to do is continue to create squares the exact same way you just did until you get the amount you need for the project. For the second method, the color change method, you first crochet the entire square and instead of binding off, you take the second color, loop it around the hook, pull it through the loop as if it were the chain one, turn your work, and then single crochet using the new color until it's five by five inches. And when that square is done, you add another color and continue until you get to the length of your choosing. For this method, it's best to have the diagram of where exactly you want the colors to be placed on the cardigan so you can know which color to switch to and when. For the cardigan, there are three parts that require ribbing the bottom of the cardigan, and both arms of the cardigan. In order to make the ribbing for the cuffs of the arm, you're going to chain 12 or 3 inches and single crochet normally into the first row. After you completed the first row, you're going to chain 1 and turn over the project. 
In order to get the ribbing effect, you have to look at the top of the project. There are a bunch of V-shaped loops on the top of the project. Each V has two loops. One loop is closer to you, which is the front loop, and one loop is farther from you, which is the back loop. What you're going to do is work into the back loop the entire time until you reach the specific length that you want for the cuffs. To work into the back loop, all you have to do is take your hook, push it under the back loop, and then single crochet normally. You're going to do this for a total of 25 rows or 8 inches depending on the size of your wrists. At the end of the last row, finish your last back loop single crochet, chain one, and then fold your work in half. What you're going to do is slip stitch both ends of the projects together so it can be round and fit around the entirety of your wrist. In order to slip stitch, all you have to do is go into both the loops of both sides of the arm cuff. Yarn over. Pull through the loop. And then pull through that loop again making only one loop remaining on your crochet hook. You're going to do this all the way until the end. Once you reach the end, you're going to do your last slip stitch, and then chain one, Cut the yarn and pull the yarn until the loop closes the cuff together. You're going to repeat this again to make another cuff and to make the bottom ribbing. Only for the bottom ribbing, you don't connect the ends together. Make sure you do not connect the ends together. For the bottom ribbing, you're going to chain 12 or 3 inches and do back loop single crochet for 200 and seven rows. I know it's a lot, but once you complete the ribbing, it's finally time to sew everything together. Before you sew everything together, it's best to place all the squares you've done exactly how you do it out in your mirrored diagram. Once they are placed in their correct spot, you want to choose how you would like to sew everything together. You can sew it by section, or by row, or by column. I went by row so that later on I can connect each row together easily. To sew everything together, you want to choose a color that can blend easily with the cardigan. It doesn't really matter actually which color you choose because you're not going to see it in the front, but sometimes it does pop out, so I tend to use neutral colors so that that it isn't super obvious. After you choose which yarn you want to use, slip stitch the squares together, making sure you cut off each time you finish putting two squares together. Once they're all sewed together, it's time to sew the panels together again. So what you're going to do is take two sections and place them in accordance of the diagram. To make it neat and symmetrical, take a couple of stitch markers and place them into the seams of the squares, making sure the seams align when you sew them together. Once the stitch markers are placed, you can slip stitch the rows together. Say that five times fast. Mm -hmm. 
For the arms, the only difference is once it's all sewed together, you're going to fold the arms in half and then slip stitch it closed so that it can be circular and your arm can fit through. To get it out the way, I personally attach the wristbands at this point just so I don't have to do it later. After each section is sewed together, it's time to attach the front panels to the back panel. To do this neatly, I recommend using stitch markers to keep everything aligned. What you're going to do is sew half the side together, which is two squares in this demonstration, and then the top two squares together, making sure that one square on the top isn't attached and two squares on the side isn't attached. The two squares on the side that isn't being attached will be where the arm goes, and the top square that isn't attached is where the button band is going to go. Like before, place the stitch markers on the seams so that they align, and then slip stitch everything together. Now that everything is connected, I recommend weaving all the loose ends together before connecting the arms just to make it easier on you. This step for me is the most painful in my opinion. Never have I ever loathed anything more than weaving in ends. Everyone weaves their ends differently, but the method that works for me is quite simple. First, take your dining needle and take one of the loose ends and thread the needle. Once the yarn is in the needle, go onto one of the opposite patches and find some loops you can go through. Make sure not to push the needle through the opposite side of the cardigan. I personally like to have three to four loops on the darning needle. Once the darning needle has the loops on, pull the needle through until the yarn goes through all the loops. Then take the needle and go through those loops once more. After you take the needle through for the second time, take the yarn out of the needle and kind of pull the patch to where it loosens up a little bit so you can see if the weaving is secure. Once you know it's secure, clip off the remainder of the yarn and then you're good to go. Do this for every single thread until it's all cleaned up. Make sure you do this for the arms as well. Now that everything is weaved together and looking cute and clean, it's time to attach the arms. What you're going to do is take the arms, pull them right side in, and then place them inside the cardigan where the armholes are located. To make sure you did that correctly, look under the cardigan and make sure the right side of the cardigan is facing up and the right side of the arm is outward. While the arm is inside the armhole, align the colors to how you prefer and then take stitch markers to align the seams together. Then slip stitch everything together.
Next, you're going to attach the bottom ribbing to the cardigan. After everything is attached, it's time to work on the button band. For the button band, you want to figure out which side you want the buttons to be on. For my cardigan, I chose for the buttons to be on the left side of the cardigan, the right side when the cardigan is laying down on the floor. So for the right side, or the left side when it's laying on the floor, you want to slip stitch all the way from the bottom ribbing until the end of the last square on the top of the front panel. Here, I'm showing you what it looks like when you go into it with single crochets without slip stitches. It looks very holy and loose and sloppy, so I prefer to slip stitch it first so that it's more tight and easier to look at. But this is just a personal preference, so you can do whatever you want. After you slip stitch all the way up, turn the cardigan and single crochet all the way down. Crocheting into the slip stitch is very tight, so make sure you slip stitch gently so that you won't struggle with crocheting the button band. You're going to continue to single crochet up and down for a total of 4 rows or 1 inch. After you complete the right side button band, take a couple of stitch markers and figure out where you want your buttons to be placed as well as how many buttons you want there to be on the button band. I personally chose 5 buttons due to the size of the buttons, but it's entirely up to you. Take the buttons, place them onto the button band, and then add a stitch marker to where you want the buttons to be. For the opposite button band, you're going to do the same slip stitch and then two rows of single crochet. After the second row of single crochet, you're going to align the band to where the stitch markers were placed and then make the buttonholes. To make the buttonholes, all you have to do is count how many loops the button will take up and then chain however many loops that is. In the video, I skipped four loops. In the video, I skipped four loops, but that was too loose for my buttons, so they easily slipped out. So I recommend skipping three loops if your buttons are around the size of mine. Once you skip those three loops, chain three, and then in the fourth loop, continue to single crochet like normal until you get to the area in which the second buttonhole has to be placed. Do this for all the buttonholes and then on the fourth and last row, single crochet down the button band. When you get to the buttonholes, all you have to do is single crochet the amount of loops you skipped into the hole, which was three loops, and then continue down the band. Once you're done, chain one, cut your yarn, pull the hook through, and then weave in all your ends. For the collar, you're going to repeat the exact same thing you did for the button band. First, slip stitch from the top of the front panel square all the way around until the opposite front panel square. After that, you're going to single crochet back and forth for a total of 11 rows 
or two and three fourths of an inch or however long you want the collar to be. It's really up to you. We are finally at the last step. Oh my gosh, this took forever. And thankfully though, this last step is incredibly easy. All you have to do is place the buttons where you place the stitch markers, take a sewing needle and sewing thread, thread your needle with a really long thread, I recommend the long thread so you don't have to get a new thread for each button. Once the thread is in the needle, create a knot a couple times to make sure it's secure on the needle. Do the same thing for the end of the thread. I personally recommend knotting it about seven to nine times just so it's secure. You don't really have to do it that many times, but I like, I kind of freak out. So I just put an extra, I just make the knot as big as I can. Once you do that, you're gonna insert the needle into the button from the back of the band. and then go back into the button diagonally. Once you pull the thread all the way through, go back into a new hole in the button, and again, go back into the button diagonally. Do this until the button feels secure. I personally like to do it five to six times. Once it's secure, push the needle through the side of the button and wrap the thread around the button 10 times and then push the needle back into the back of the button band. Then turn over the band so you can see the sewing thread. Take your needle, go through the thread and pull until you have a small loop. Put the needle through that loop and pull it so it tightens up everything you just did to the button. Do this three times, cut the thread, and you're finally finished with your cardigan. super happy with how this cardigan came out for it being only the second time making one. I personally made the sleeves a tad bit too short for me, but when I pull on them a little bit, it's no big deal. I hope this tutorial was super helpful and you have a beautiful cardigan to wear and show off to literally everybody you know. If you did make one, make sure to tag me on my cozy cardigan Instagram so I can see everything you all did and admire your beautiful creations. Also, for those who don't want to make a cardigan, I am considering doing commissions in a month or two due to a lot of you asking me but I have to figure out some things beforehand. Um, so just let me know what you think of that idea. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.